Welcome back to another episode of Opal Wave MTG, a channel dedicated to exploring power levels in EDH and helping you tune your deck to your meta. I'm your host Jacob, and before I start this episode, I'd like to make an announcement that I am currently in the process of creating a Discord for curated EDH play over Spell Table that will be using my power level system uh, roughly. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in being a part of in terms of volunteering, uh, you can shoot me an email that will be in the description below. And if you just want to join the server at some point, it should be open hopefully within the next couple of weeks, uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel and that'll also be added to the description of all of my videos uh, once that is created. And with that announcement, let's get started with this deck tech, which is going to be about Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief, which is a two mana blue and green fairy rogue with flying, and whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief, you may copy that spell, the copy targets Ivy, and there are, there's a bunch of different directions you can go with this commander. Uh, most people are kind of talking about the, the mutate space. Um, so that's what I have done here with this skirmish version. Uh, be sure to let me know what you did with your version in the comments below. And as usual, the, uh, the deck lists are in the description below. And if you want to help support my channel, check out my fiber that will also be in the description below. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So with the skirmish version of Ivy, like I said before, pretty straightforward mutate deck we've got here. We've got all of the mutate creatures that we can shake a stick at, as well as some pretty decent mutate targets like Dark Steel Mirror, which is indestructible, Spell Wild Oof, which makes the spells cost less, uh, since the uh, mutate spells do target, uh, which is why we are running them with Ivy, since she will also get she will copy that mutate spell and mutate it onto her as well. Super strong synergy there and a Wilson, which has that ward two as well as vigilance, reach and trample. So some extra keyword uh, soup kind of as we're mutating onto this creature. We've also got an Ilon of Blossoms and a Verdran Enchantress since we do have a few, or not a few, we've got a, a decent amount of enchantments that we can uh, get some extra card advantage on while we are pumping up our dudes. Moving on to the sorceries, we've got stuff like Cultivate and Kadama's Reach for some ramp. Threats undetected, which can help us tutor for our mutate creatures or our mutate targets, whichever one we need at the given moment. Uh, increasing Savagery, which will put five counters on target creature, which will get copied with Ivy and put another five counters on Ivy as well. So 10 power total for four mana or 20 power total if you flash it back since it'll put 10 counters on that creature instead. We've also got a Primal Command which can be a little bit of a removal and a tutor as well. Then we've also got, uh, in our instance, got uh, Aetherize to help uh, just a nice board wipe in case people are swinging at us. Some catch-all removal like Beast Within and these bounce spells and some counter magic like Cancel, Counter Spell, uh, Disappearing Act, which has the additional cost of returning a permanent to our hand. And the, and the nice thing about these bounce spells is while we can use them offensively, we can also use them to help reset our mutate piles. So essentially, as we're mutating onto our creature, we're getting those extra mutate triggers on our Ivy. If we uh, start running out of mutate creatures, essentially we can return our original mutate card to our hand, and that's gonna bounce all of the creatures back to our hand as well. So we can recast our Dark Steel Mirror or our Spell Wild Oof and start mutating onto it again and getting extra triggers on our uh, Ivy. So some really nice utility that we get by running these bounce spells, whether we're using offensively or for utility. In our artifacts, we've just kept it really simple. Some two drop rocks and three drop rocks. Uh, you could add a twinning staff here if you really want to. We're going to use that in the next version of the deck. Um, so, but yeah, it could be a decent upgrade here if you really wanted to throw it in. In the enchantments, we've got some cards that can help protect our uh, our creatures essentially stuff like alpha authority shielding plaques uh, carapace which we can sacrifice it to regenerate the enchanted creature bear umbra to give our stuff uh, totem armor the ancestral mask and the armancers guys are going to be super sweet since they will um you know they'll go copied and then uh, basically give plus two plus two for each other enchantment in play or for the armancers guys for each other are attached to it uh can be some really sweet um uh, power that we get out of these two cards. Hydra's Growth is going to double the counters on uh, up to two creatures since it'll get copied on the Ivy as well. 
And we've also got an ordeal of Nylia and the ordeal of Thassa. Uh, since we are on like this counter shenanigan type of deal, uh, that'll give us um, just a little bit of utility in terms of like the Hydra's Grizz and stuff like that. And we've also got the launch and the rancor, uh, which are really nice evasive uh, enchantments we can use that are also gonna return to our hand when the creature that we have it on is either bounced to our hand or destroyed or what have you. And we've also got a few ways to gain a little bit of extra card advantage like Snake Umbra, Sixth Fence, and a Curiosity. Uh, moving on to the lands, really straightforward here since we're two color. Uh, just, you know, some lands that are, some dual lands essentially that are entering tapped. Uh, we've got a Moss or Bridge uh, since, you know, hitting that power requirement shouldn't be that uh, too hard in the deck. Uh, and then, yeah, just a, you know, a bunch of basics. Um, not gonna not gonna you know fret too much over in the skirmish power level we do have rocks that can help fix as well as the cultivate and a kadama's reach uh, for ram moving on to the battle version of uh, ivy uh, we've got some definitely some much stronger uh, mutate targets in terms of like cephalid constable where whenever it deals combat damage to a player or turn x target permanents so that player controls to their hand could potentially be a very brutal board wipe We've also got some uh, copy spells like Sakashima and Sakashima the Imposter, uh, both Sakashimas rather, uh, and a Spark Double. And the reason why we've got these is because if you copy Ivy, um, obviously you'll have multiple Ivies. So when you mutate on a creature, uh, all of the Ivies are going to mutate and you're going to start getting uh, like two or three extra mutates per Ivy, which can really get out of hand. Uh, then we've also added an Errant Street Artist, which has copy target spell you control that wasn't cast. So when we copy our uh, Mutate spell, we can then copy it again with Errant. Uh, added a Beast Whisper, so when we are casting our Mutate spells, we will get to draw cards. A Silverback Elder, super sweet card from Dominaria. So when we are casting our Mutate spells, we get to destroy artifacts and enchantments. Uh, we've still got the Oof as well as the Storm Chaser uh, Drake, really nice cards. And then the Volo, which will also uh, copy our mutates as well. So a bunch of ways to just get a bunch of mutates on the stack. We've also cut back on some of the less impactful mutate cards uh, in favor of some just stronger cards in general. We've also added a Will Breaker, which whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes a target of a spell or ability you control, you get to take control of that creature which can be uh, pretty backbreaking so, since we can just start taking people's commanders and, and whatnot. And then finally, one of our bigger includes here is gonna be this Jinjitaxius, which will copy artifact instant and sorcery spells we control and uh, counter instant artifact and sorcery spells our opponents control. So super sweet there. We've also added some dorks for um, a little bit more early game ramp and they can also be mutate targets, so. And our sorceries, uh, just made some upgrades to our ramp with the Farseek Nature's Lore and the three visits. We've still got the threats undetected for a little bit more tutoring power and an Eldritch Evolution as well. And a slip through space to uh, give uh, another creature unblockable as well as draw a card in the Ivy. We get to draw an additional card when we do that. We still got the Aether Spouts in our instance. We've added stuff like Cerulean Wisps, uh, Charge Through, a little bit more um, you know, ways for us to, to get some more draw triggers um, from our stuff, as well as upgraded our interaction a little bit, made it a little bit more cheaper. Uh, stuff like Fierce Guard Guardianship, Pong of Ice, Swan Song, Counterspell, uh, Psychrift for another board wipe. And in our uh, artifacts, we've made a few more uh, adjustments since we did add more dorks uh, in terms of ramp, uh, we just kind of cut back and just kept the cheaper versions of ramp that we have. And we added a twinning staff since when we copy spells with Ivy, we get to copy them an additional time. It's super strong. And then we've got Helm of the Host, which can again make multiple copies of Ivy and let you get a bunch of triggers when you're casting spells on other creatures or even when you are casting spells on Ivy. Moving on to our uh, enchantments. We've got a Words of Wind and an Equilibrium. So instead of using those instants uh, to bounce our, our mutate stuff back and kind of do like the one shot, we can instead use cards like Equilibrium that can continuously uh, return our mutate cards to our hand. Uh, that way we don't have to lose out on resources essentially to continue to mutate. So we can mutate, bounce something to our hand, 
uh, mutate again, bounce something to our hand, and keep mutating while we make Ivy like really, really big. Also got the Vesuvian Dip Duplomancy. That one's a weird one to say. Uh, so when we cast spells that target creatures, we get to make additional copies. So if you're seeing a theme here, uh, we're trying to make a bunch of IVs, and then from there, uh, just get a ton of draw triggers and or mutate triggers, and kind of just start going ham from there. Especially since the IV token uh, won't be legendary, um, it's going to get really crazy since you can target Ivy, you'll make another token of Ivy, and then the next spell you cast is going to target Ivy, and then you'll make, you'll draw, or you'll get two triggers, and the next time you'll get three, and then four, and then we'll just keep adding on and adding on and adding on. We've kept the launch and the uh, ranker um, as ways for evasion, and it's also really nice since we can pair it with the will breaker. Uh, we will be able to you know, cast a ranker on our opponent's creature, will baker or trigger, will take control of that creature, and then if the creature dies or something, uh, we can return the ranker to our hand and potentially steal something else. So it could be super strong in that context. And in our lands, um, added some more utility lands like Boseju and Otawara, as well as lands, more dual lands that have the potential to enter untapped. Uh, added a Plaza of Heroes, super sweet card in this deck, helps protect Ivy a little bit more. An Alchemist Refuge so we can cast stuff at instant speed potentially. And yeah, so pretty straightforward upgrades. We're just making more lands that can potentially enter untapped. And before I move on to the glory version of Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below letting me know what command you'd like to see me to see brew next and what you did with your version of Ivy. Super interested to hear uh, whether you did like infection shenanigans or straight up auras, enchantments. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely interested. And moving on to the glory version of Ivy. Uh, we finally get to brew a deck with Displacer Kitten. And I think this card is super sweet. And uh, yeah, so this is this is something I've been wanting to do on this channel for a while now, is, is brew a deck that kind of features Displacer Kitten. Uh, and so, so here we are, we've done it. And uh, we've got a few ways that we can uh, kind of combo with this card. So essentially we've got this Aether Channeler. So if we've got two uh, artifacts that are essentially free, or like a Soul Ring and a Mana Crypt, or um, you know, whatever, uh, what have you, Mox Amber, uh, Chrome Mox, uh, Lotus Petal. I mean, we've got a lot of uh, free artifacts potentially here. We can uh, flicker the Aether Channeler, and then when it enters the battlefield, you can return another uh, target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So what you do is you cast uh, your first artifact, you flicker your Aether Channel, you return the other artifact to your hand, and then you can uh, tap the artifact that you cast for mana, and then you can cast the one that you put to your hand uh, back to the stack, the Splacer Kitten will trigger, and then you can bounce the Aether Channeler again, and from there, you can make infinite mana, and with infinite mana, you can filter it into a Kennen, or you can put it into a Thrasios, um, or you can just do start doing other crazy shenanigans like flickering an Eternal Witness and start casting your draw spells over and over again. Uh, and then we've also got another really interesting combo where we can essentially use Eternal Witness plus a Lotus Petal plus one of our one mana cantripping spells. Uh, so essentially, we'll have our Eternal Witness. We will cast uh, the Lotus Petal. We'll flicker our Eternal Witness. We'll bring back our uh, one mana cost cantrip to our hand. We will crack the Lotus Petal. We'll cast our one mana cantrip. That will trigger Displacer Kitten. And that's going to flicker Eternal Witness. And that's going to bring back the Lotus Petal back to our hand. And then we can go back and forth over and over again until we draw our entire deck. And then from there, we should be able to uh, combo off with some of our other uh, wind conditions, whether it be like a Thassa's Oracle or uh, Aether Flux or just making uh, an infinitely large board with Finale of Devastation. Then we've also got a Hole Breaker Horror um, as another like wind condition that can kind of do like the same line with the Splacer Kitten where you're bouncing back and forth between the artifacts. Uh, then we can also do like Spell Seeker lines where we're just keep, we keep fetching out for more instants that can let us draw cards. Um, we've also added, uh, we've got the Orphar, same thing, I, yeah, we had it in the battle version too. 
Uh, I believe, just wanna double check. Oh, no, we did not, but we do have the Orvar, so we can start making copies of our Displacer Kitten or make copies of Spellseeker and really just go ham uh, with those cards in general. Uh, we've added a Gilded Drake as well and a Cloud of Fairies, which can help us make um, extra mana, whether we're copying it with Orvar or flickering it with Displacer Kitten. A lot of really good utility we get there. Moving on to our sorceries, uh, we've got, like I said before, the Finale of Devastation. We've added a Neo form for a little bit of extra tutoring power and an Eldritch Evolution. Energy Tap is a really cool one since we can target a creature we control to make uh, extra mana equal to its converted mana cost. But when we do that, we'll copy Energy Tap and we get to make uh, we get to tap uh, Ivy for an additional two mana. So whatever you add with Energy Tap, you just get to immediately add an extra two mana. Uh, seems pretty sweet to me. Then we've got a few tutors in addition to the creature tutors. Uh, Emergent Scroll to help us tutor for some of our cantrepping spells. Solve the Equation can also do that too. And a step through to target, uh, which has the wizard cycling where you discard it and search your library for a wizard uh, creature. And we can either get uh, Thrasios or a spell seeker or we can get Orvar. Uh, a lot of really decent utility that we have um, with this step through. And our instance definitely made some really great upgrades, uh, stuff like um, Flusterstorm, Force of Negation, uh, we've added a, uh, a Force of Will, uh, Intuition for a little bit of extra tutoring power, Veil of Summer for some protection. Uh, yeah, definitely just upgraded our interaction a bunch. Um, in addition to adding a bunch of, uh, you know, we've got all the one mana can tripping type spells so we can uh, start targeting our creatures, get extra triggers off of uh, Ivy, and start ripping through our deck. Should be super sweet. And in our artifacts, definitely made a bunch of upgrades. Added our zero drop rocks. Uh, Mox Amber super cool since we should be able to get Ivy out turn one or turn two, or turn two uh, pretty consistently. And uh, also the zero drop and, and one drop rocks uh, just make the Displacer Kitten lines and the whole Breaker Horror lines a little bit more consistent. We've got the Aetherflux Reservoir for some uh, wind condition power, essentially. And in the enchantments, we've still got the Vesuvian du uh, Duplomancy. Um, super strong card, basically uh, a second Orvar, or Orvar is a second Duplomancy, uh, however you want to look at it. Uh, Sylvan Library, Rhystic Study, and the Mystical Mora for some extra card draw. Still got the Season of Growth, but I think this card's really sweet um, since you just get to you know, draw a bunch of cards with the Season and scry a little bit when you cast your creatures. And a Treachery. Uh, so Ivy doesn't care um, if it's a creature that you control, it just cares if it's targeting a creature that's not Ivy. So essentially when uh, Treachery, uh, when you cast Treachery, you get to make an additional Treachery that will target Ivy and you get to control, um, you'll get, you already have control of Ivy, but the main part is when Treachery enters the battlefield, you get to untap five lands. So essentially for five mana, you're going to make uh, 10 mana, which seems super sweet and also has some really fun uh, potential interactions uh, with like Displacer Kitten potentially. Moving on to our sort uh, lands, sorry. Um, yeah, so just if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll see that all of our lands at this point are entering untapped. We've added our off-color duels. Um, we've added uh, Mystic Sanctuary, since we have a, a decent amount of uh, islands in the deck, we're two-color, um, and we have the fetch lands that we can use to get it, do a little bit of shenanigans with Orvar, potentially. Um, we've still got the Pesaju and the Otawara for extra uh, utility. But yeah, uh, pretty straightforward here. It's just all of our lands are entering untapped. Uh, lots of dual lands or multicolor lands so we can hit our colors consistently. Thanks for checking out this episode of Oval Wave MTG. Uh, again, I'm your host, Jacob, and until next time.